What is up? What is up, everyone? My goodness, it is the beginning of Labor Day weekend. Uh, I have been so sick these last couple of days. You could probably hear it in my voice, but man, I've been just stuck in the house and laying on my couch. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but it looks like it's starting to recede. I'm feeling a little bit better today. And, and anticipation of uh, the new Razer XP Pro coming to my dealership, our sponsor, Performance East, this weekend, uh, I thought I would do um, a video about the upgrades that I did to my Razer and some of the regrets that I actually really have about some of them um, because I think I could have put that money to use in other places, things of that nature. So um, let's go ahead and move these vehicles, get the Razer out, put it in the driveway so that way I can give you a better look and a better idea of why I feel the way I do. Let's get it on. Everyone, we're back, we're back. Man, we're all here at Carolina Adventure World just hanging out. Thanks a lot for tuning in. So uh, I've got the Razor in the garage because uh, my wife took off today and she didn't leave me the keys to the Jeep, so I couldn't put it in the driveway. But um, like I was saying earlier, uh, a couple weeks ago I went to my uh, sponsor. We were talking to, uh, talking to them for a little bit, and uh, through those discussions I found out that they had actually ordered up some of the XP Pros and they were going to be here by around Labor Day weekend. Uh, well, today I got a message from uh, Justin. He said, hey, bud, just wanted to let you know we are getting them in tomorrow. Uh, we should be getting the white one and the red one. And uh, you know what? Um, I was laying on the couch just about dying. And now all of a sudden I feel a lot better. But uh, what I really want to talk to you guys today um, is something that I've been meaning to do for a while now. Um, it's kind of something that you don't want to talk about. And I think almost every guy who's had a razor or a side by side or whatever the case may be that's done upgrades or even on a truck or a car or whatever the case uh, is they've had regrets you know about some of the upgrades that they've done and uh, kind of probably thought that they should have done this or should have done that as opposed to what they actually did and uh, that's what we're going to look at today because I have some serious regrets on the uh, modifications that I've done on mine so why don't we just stop talking about it and get right into everything that uh, I've been wanting to share with you guys for quite a while now. All right, well, first things first, uh, the main reason why I'm making this video is because of the new Razor that's coming out. Um, you know, I've gotten some mixed responses from what people think it's gonna be, how it looks, what it's gonna perform like. And I, for fun, uh, excuse me, I, for one, really feel like it is the new, uh, it, it is the Razor of the future. Um, right, so uh, Cody and I are a little bit split on this. Um, my opinion is that this is going to be the car that takes us into 2020 and beyond. He thinks that it's kind of a step backwards in the way that it looks. Um, there's no doubt that it's going to perform. Um, I've watched a couple of videos of it online, uh, been able to kind of diagnose what people think of it, the ones who are actually behind the seat, um, pushing the throttle, making the tight turns, things of that nature. Um, and so I think they're gonna sell like hotcakes when they hit the lots. Um, and in that, everybody knows that it's super rare when you buy a unit and you just kind of keep it as is for a long, long time. I think uh, a lot of folks, they get into these cars, they drive them stock, 
and then they immediately realize, boom, like that, like these are the upgrades I really want to do on my razor. Well, um, that's the intent of this video. I am going to walk you through some of the things that I did, uh, things that I am glad that I did, things that I am not so glad that I did, and where I put my money. And I'm going to give you some price tags too on some of these things that I did to the car. And that way you'll kind of have a good idea of maybe you just bought something or you've been wanting to do a lot of upgrades or you're the type of person that likes to do all your upgrades at once, which is kind of like uh, how I am. Um, so maybe this will help you out in that nature and give you kind of some pointers and some do's and uh, don't do's. So let's just go ahead and start with the top three upgrades I really wish that I did before I let you all know um, what types of upgrades I have currently on this car. You can probably already start to see some, but um, a lot of my money that I put into this car were into my seats. Now, those seats are beautiful. They are Corbo seats. Um, they're not very well known in the UTV side-by-side -side industry. Um, but these are actually UTV seats. If you go onto the Corbo website, you will see that they have a very specific category just for their off-road seats. Um, you're gonna see most of these types of things in their uh, sports car, race car segment. Um, but if you look at the details in these things, they are just absolutely beautiful. They are very well crafted. They're super plush. I mean, when you sit into this seat, it is literally like a cockpit. You sit in it, it holds you, it feels right. The ride is super plush in them. You don't go side to side. Um, and once you get your harness on, it just feels so incredibly amazing. Um, and they're just, they look great too. Now I will tell you, I spent approximately $900 on both of these seats. Um, it was absolutely money well spent. However, I really do regret putting that money into the seats because the Razor seats that came with this were actually pretty good. Um, I could have done without them and I would have rather have put that money into the performance. Um, so that's probably my first um, don't do that I myself experienced. Um, if, it, if I was to do it all over again, I think the single most first upgrade I would have done was tuned my 900. Uh, engine. So this is a 2017 model Sport 900 with the EPS, uh, which means it has the electronic power steering um, and it performs really good. But, but there are very well-known tunes out there that you can slap onto this car. Um, they're ECU tunes, which means it's all computer programming. Um, and they do make a 1000 series into this, into this car also. So this is a 60 inch model. Um, it comes with some 27 inch uh, Dirt Commander tires and the tune that you can put on a 900 will basically turn it into a 1000. And I've always said, if I was to do this all over again, I would still stay with the S, the Sport Model Series Razor, but I would have bought the 1000 series. Now, why I didn't put that money into the tune beforehand was because I went to two uh, very good tune websites. I called the individuals themselves and the, I went to Evolution Power Sports and I went to Bikeman Performance. And both of those tunes did basically the same thing. Um, however, the tunes themselves were about $1,300 to $1,500. So it was hard for me because I'm a tangible type of person. I really like to like see the upgrade and, and what it looks like when it's done. I just wasn't going to be able to see that finished product. So I didn't put that money into the tune and I really regret it now. Um, I should have done that. Um, so that is my first basically regret that I have with my upgrades. I really wish I did that and I didn't. Um, the second thing I wish that I would have done is I would have... Uh, put on some nice wheels and tires. Uh, now, if I would have done that, I would have had to put on a clutch kit. Um, now, Cody's running 28s, Motoclaw, EFX tires on his, um, and from what he's telling me, they're not taken away from the power, but I do still think that if I would have put on some 28s, uh, I would have went with some fuel grippers and some vector wheels. Um, I would have wanted to do some clutching. I did look in 
to some very well-known clutches. I would have went with a Dalton clutch. The Dalton clutch system is going to cost you about $350 to $500, depending on what uh, phases you get. But um, I think that would have been my second most uh, important upgrade to this, this car because the wheels and tires is literally where this machine touches the ground. So why I didn't make that upgrade in the first place makes logical sense. And that reason being, look at these tires. These are two years old. I've had these tires out on 13,000 feet in Silverton, Colorado. I've had them in the deserts of New Mexico. I've had them here on the East Coast in mud pits of uh, North Carolina. These tires are beasts. They don't wear, they give you the traction that you need. They clear out super well. And I mean, I have one small puncture on the back left, I think. And I was able to plug that with just a home little $9.95 tire patch kit. Um, these tires are worth the money. They work. And the reason why I didn't upgrade them was just because I felt bad because I mean, just look at them. They've held up so well. In hindsight, I think I would have went with a better wheel and tire package because not only would it probably have been able to do the same type of performance that I have now, but it would have gave it a better aesthetic look and it would have helped me feel a little bit more confident when I was going through deeper um, mud pits here on the East Coast. Um, we're in North Carolina now. We're in a small town called Goldsboro and if you know anything about Goldsboro there's a mud park uh, or off-road park called Busco Beach um, and there are a lot and a lot of mud holes out there so I just don't feel very confident going out there I think if I had a bigger better wheel entire package I would have had a I would have a lot more confidence and that should have been my number two upgrade um, that I didn't do right so those are the upgrades one being the tune, two being the wheel and tires, and three is what you'll probably guess right now by looking at this um, razor right now is the cage. So tunes, and I don't mean like audio tunes, I mean like tuning up your engine, wheel and tires, and a cage system, uh, which is all the things that I think I should have put all my initial upgrade cash into, and I did not. However, this is not an all stock cage. The back part is what's called a low pro cage, and that's from CM Motors, uh, Motorsports, excuse me, CW Motorsports. Um, so that is actually a about a six and a half inch drop. We do have a video on that. Um, so if you get a moment after this and want to check out what happened when we installed that, we do have an entire video with specs and measurements and all of that. But the cage itself doesn't look too bad. Uh, Cody got himself a very, very nice custom built uh, cage by Gilbert Designs and his is just super beautiful. It's powder coated white. It looks great. Now I'm happy with my cage, but I wish I got an aftermarket cage built for it because I think that the cages just make these things pop and they look super great. Um, so as far as upgrades and my regrets, those are my three major ones. If I was to do it all over again, that's exactly how I would do it. Now let's talk about my specific things that I've got so that way you know what they look like and uh, it can give you an idea of how much they cost and what you might wanna do for yours. So um, let's start from the front and go all the way to the back. This is a Assault Industries grill. Um, that is not the original colors that it came with. I actually sanded all that down and color matched it to my cage and my speaker bar in the back there. So it's all that ghost gray. It looks really good. The, the colors kind of go throughout the back, the front to back of the car. And I'd even color match the, uh, the light brackets as well. So if you look really closely at it, it thing looks pretty good. Um, However, I will tell you that the original uh, grill that I got, it did start to rust. Um, Cody's is starting to do that now. So I would have to probably give you a thumbs down on the Assault Industries front end grills. Um, they just don't hold up in the extreme uh, humid weather, the East Coast and things of that nature. 
if you're on the uh, west coast or in the dunes of California, I'll bet you it's going to be a pretty good product. But unfortunately for over here, it's just not holding up. Um, so take that for what it is. Um, so let's move over to the lights. So I have rigid lights. Um, these are super great at night. They light everything up. I got the D-Series driving lights on the right-hand side. And I got these, um, I can't remember what they're called, um, but I'll probably remember throughout the video, so I'll remind myself to make sure I get back. Um, but these are kind of have like a backlit light that glows in the back here. It's blue, it's ambient blue, um, and it looks really sharp. But these are kind of like a, a floodlight, and these are my D-Series driving lights. They really make a difference at night. Uh, now, if I was to do this all over again, um, this light system cost me about 250 for this system and about 250 for this system. Um, install time took forever. Uh, these brackets took forever to get in here. Um, so I got about a good $600 into these lights and about at least 10 to 15 hours installing these things into this car. If I was to do it all over again, I'd probably just put some nice uh, LED lights in the stock headlamps and just kind of switch those out. We did that for Cody's. It looks really good at night. Um, it makes a huge difference. And yeah, having the rigid lights looks good. It makes, you know, it gives you some street cred, but I don't really think it's super needed. Um, first and foremost, we don't do as much night riding as I thought we'd be doing. Um, so that was a big mistake on my part. So before you're doing <clears throat> light upgrades or you wanna get yourself a bar or some KC lights or whatever the case may be, that stuff's gonna cost you money. It's gonna take you a lot of time to install it, especially, especially if you don't like doing uh, the wiring and things of that nature so if you just want to take out the stock bulb and put a nice upgraded hid or led in there it's gonna it's gonna save you a ton of time and it's gonna save you a lot of money too uh, so my advice for you is just to go that route all right so the big thing the wrap this is a custom wrap that i designed um, it's from utv effects graphics.com um, I would not buy from them again only because uh, I had an issue with uh, a wreck that I had and wanted to replace parts of this wrap so when I contacted them later on after having already installed it they told me that they weren't able to uh, mimic the wrap again because they upgraded their printers uh, so that was really disappointing um, I was not happy about that so because they were unable to do that they just lost a lot of credibility with me However, I will tell you that the wrap itself looks pretty good. <clears throat> it's in pieces, so you can kind of see where this wrap um, starts and stop. And uh, it took me quite a while to get this wrap on, and I'm really impressed with how long it's uh, stayed on and how durable it is. Uh, let me show you real quick right here. This was actually a piece that was involved in the wreck that I had, um, and it's held up pretty good. I'm really impressed. This wrap itself, uh, with the design, printing, and shipping, and all that, cost me about $750. Um, now that I know a little bit more about these types of things and these wraps, I understand that I probably overpaid a little bit for the wrap, but I'm not upset about that. I think it looks really sharp. It really makes everything um, look good. Uh, it matches the lime squeeze uh, springs that I've got, and, uh, I just think it ties the whole thing, the whole unit together. So I'm really happy about it. I don't think that it's really something you need right off the get go. Um, Cody has not been doing a wrap on his specifically because we're tackling the upgrades that I told him that I wish I did. And he's making his car look super sharp. Um, so I'm really happy about that too. But at the end of the day, it does make your car unique. Um, it lets it stand out. And, and that's really what was important for me. I didn't want to have the same exact color scheme that everybody else had while I was out on the trails. So I'm happy with it, I'm glad I did it. And look, I even matches my Razor Dream sticker here. Check that out, huh? You want one of them? Go ahead and DM me, I'll see if I can get you one. Um, all right, while we're here, let's move inside of the cockpit really quick. So I wanna show you some small things that I did that I think are really important. And these are upgrades you do wanna make right when you get your Razor. So right when you open the door, there's this really cool bag right here. 
This is um, a door bag. You can put all of your stuff in here. And believe it or not, when you're out on a long ride, you're gonna really need that because um, you can put everything in there from your gloves to your recovery straps to whatever the case may be, but it's really good storage. The Sport Series razors don't come with very much sport uh, storage at all. So the bags are a super cool thing and you should really upgrade those or get those bags as soon as you can. I also got the Polaris uh, rear view mirror here. Um, this is very important. Not only just for you to be able to see around, but for safety reasons. Um, there's been a couple times when we've been cruising down a trail and I'll look at my rear view mirror and I'll see somebody coming up on my left or my right passing me, you know, right when I want to turn into a trailhead. So it's very important that you get something like this so you can see. I mean, yes, you can crank your neck left or right to constantly be looking behind you. But another good tip for this is if you're riding with friends, if you ride with friends a lot, this allows you to check up to make sure they're still following you if you're in the lead. Um, the last thing you want to do is go out for a nice long ride and then not check up on them for five minutes and realize they're nowhere near you because something happened. They pulled off the side of the road and you've been cruising for the last five minutes, a couple miles, and now you have no idea where they're at. So super awesome upgrade. Definitely get it. And finally, these, uh, these uh, harnesses. Uh, these are super cheap harnesses. Okay, I forgot to tell you. So this this uh, rear view mirror, you can get brand new for $129. And these bags should be about 100 to 200 bucks for the set. They're really not that expensive. So definitely look into them. The harnesses are the same. They're about $95 a piece. So 200 bucks in harnesses, very important. Um, now these do come with the seat belt, of course, as you know. And uh, if my memory serves me right, the new XP Pro is gonna have harness uh, stock. So um, like I said before, I did wreck my Razor once. Um, my harnesses kept me in my seat and in the car, and man, did they do the job. And I am so blessed and happy that I had them because um, I think I really could have gotten very seriously hurt if I didn't have these. Um, they work very well, um, and I highly recommend that also being a first upgrade that you do um, is pull out that stock seat belt, put in a nice set of harnesses because they are a lifesaver. While we're in here, let's talk about another upgrade that I did that I have major regrets on, um, and that's the sound bar. I can't tell you how dissatisfied I am with the sound bar. Um, now, this is a Boss 14-inch um, sound system. Um, the only thing that I really love about it is this control module. So I've got this control module down here. It's all Bluetooth. Um, it works really well. It connects right into the system. And as soon as I turn on my Razer, this thing turns on and it connects right to my phone so I can play my music from my phone. So this is really good, but the sound and the level of sound that comes out of this is just not very, uh, not satisfying whatsoever. Um, I've ran this sound bar. I've also had another sound bar that we did on our Ranger build. Um, that's another video. So if you're new to our channel um, and you get an opportunity, go ahead and look for our Ranger XP 1000 build. I put another sound bar in that and I will tell you neither one of these sound bars are satisfying. Um, I mean, it'll do the job if you're just putting around, but if you're really going out to have a good time, you're going to have a couple of drinks, you're going to go out and, and just kind of blare some tunes and get your mind off the world. Um, this is not going to do it. So if I was to do it all over again, I'd probably put a little bit more money into some sound cannons. Um, I got this whole bar right here. I could easily mount two to four sound cannons on here. Now, that means it's going to really block my rear view mirror angle, viewing angle. So it's really going to hinder that. But if that's the case and you want to do, I mean, you could put one right here firing this way, two more here firing underneath, right? And then one firing above the passenger seat. And that would sound just incredibly amazing. Um, that's probably going to be what I do. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it, but it needs to be done um, for sure. Finally, while we're in this general area is the roof. Now the roof is really good. Let me see if I can jump up on my tire here. <clears throat> I love my roof. It's got this small little, uh, kind of like a, a skylight view <laughs> here where you can kind of look up and check out the clouds while you're cruising around. 
But um, this is most important when you're out doing a lot of desert riding, keep that sun off you. Um, and it's important out here on the East Coast too, but um, this roof itself is about 450 bucks. So, I mean, God, that's a lot of money. Now, looking back in hindsight, I'm like, geez, why did I pay that much money for this roof? Um, you could go with some real cheap knockoff roofs that would probably cost you about $129 to $200, 250 bucks. Um, but it looks good. All the graphics match the Razor. It's got the same exact color scheme. If you look at the colors, um, this color very closely matches that color. Um, so I think it really just ties everything in. Um, so, but not really um, regretting this roof system at all. We're still using it. Um, if you look up there, you can see all the damage from my uh, wreck that I had when we were at Carolina Adventure World. Uh, we also have a video on that, so you get a chance to check that one out too. But um, the wreck isn't on the video, but we do have a video of that trip. It was a great trip. Um, but this thing holds up really good. It's all plastic, good stuff. All right. And finally, well, not finally. I guess I have two more because I forgot the winch. We, I've got these really sleek looking Assault Industries mirrors. So this is the same brand as my uh, grill. These mirrors are very well constructed. They're overpriced, but they look sharp and they do perform how you need them to perform. So as with any rear view mirror, you adjust them, they stay tucked in, and they give you a really good sight of down the line right behind you in this general area so that you can see people coming up behind you. Now, that's really important because uh, where we ride out here, there's a lot of motocross dudes. And um, let's just face it, you get in a wreck with one of those, they're gonna be more hurt than you are. Um, but this is a really good safety feature and it really looks sharp too. Um, I think I paid about $300 to $350 for these mirrors. And like I said, overpriced, probably shouldn't have done it. But now that I have them, I'm glad I do. And finally, this winch. So this is a beast of a winch. I don't know how I missed this, but um, when I was down here talking about the grill, this is a 4,500 pound KFI winch. Um, it, is, it is super nice. It works very well. And I don't regret this purchase or install one bit. Um, I think I paid around $350 for this winch. Um, Cody has the exact same one. It didn't take a very long time to install, but I will tell you it's not going to be anything like a, a Polaris branded winch. If you buy a Polaris branded winch for the specific model of vehicle, it will install like really, really quickly. Um, not this one. This one's going to take you a little bit of time to route the wires. Um, it does have a lot of good features. And I'm really glad that I bought that, especially here on the East Coast, people get stuck. Um, I've actually recovered more people from them getting stuck than I have myself, because uh, thank God I have yet to get myself stuck. Maybe it's just because I just don't take those risks because I don't have the confidence in my tires. Um, all right, folks, well, that is it. Um, thanks a lot for tuning in and hanging out with me for a little bit. Um, I hope that this video helped you kind of decide what types of upgrades would be good for you and what might not be. Um, just keep in mind my top three that I said I would do right from the get-go would be a tune, wheels and tires, and that cage. Um, now granted, it's easier said than done because I'm talking about probably a good four to five thousand dollars in upgrades right off the bat. Um, but if you want the biggest bang for your buck, I think those three are going to be the ones that give it to you. Um, so anyway, uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you again real soon. All right, well, I just put all the vehicles back and I'm totally realizing that I forgot to mention a huge upgrade that I did to this Razor was our doors. So these are the Stealth Doors by Pro Armor. Um, I mean, I don't know, I'm mixed on these doors. Uh, I will admit they look the best, but I will say they aren't as sturdy. They aren't as um, good as the full doors that you can buy. Um, now these have been wrapped, um, so you can't really see the, the door itself, but it does have these Pretty neat vents here and vents here. They don't work, they don't do anything. Um, I mean, it looks like it's gonna grab air, but in reality, if you're on the East Coast, that entire grill is gonna get 
uh, plastered and covered with mud within the first five or ten minutes that you're out on the trails, so it's not going to do nothing. But it does um, open this up a little bit. Um, it does give you some more arm room inside here. Um, and they just go right over the stock doors. So even though they look good, um, I don't know. I don't know if I'd buy them again. Um, so yeah, these are about 500 bucks. Um, and I don't know if uh, it's something I'd do if I had to do it all over again.